versus DC. DC now sitting six and seven in Group B. Cloud Nine are three and twelve, I believe. Um, or excuse me, uh, three and three and ten. Uh, get your mic down, Lumi. There you go. There you go. Thank you. Uh, sorry, I think it's th actually three and ten. Uh, okay, three and ten. So. Uh, yeah. Right now, they're in good, pretty good position because Hellraiser's just lost their first game, so Cloud9 is a little more comfortable, but you don't want to rest too easy. Uh, and they definitely would like to have some momentum going into that main event. So, that said, draft will begin now. The teams will try to clear their heads from that absolutely wild game one and just focus on the task at hand. Yeah, something that we noticed in the draft of last game was that the mid heroes got picked really early, right? Queen of Pain, second, or second pick overall for Abed. I wonder if it's, you know, like you said, the teams are very familiar with each other. They know kind of what each other want. And then some of the key heroes just get pushed up uh, in terms of how important it is to get picked up early. So that's why we probably see the puck. Normally you wait it till like, you know, maybe at least phase two to pick it up. Although puck as a mid hero has been a, a special factor because certain teams like EG in particular, you just always ban it out against them and you have to draft it early if you want it. Yeah, so they start. They do change it up here. Sankin first overall. The puck reply from Cloud Nine. Yep. Or sorry, um, puck first overall. Sankin the reply. Uh, yep. And then Silencer grabbed up by DC again. So they're gonna stick with the Silencer. I think they showed how powerful he can be in some of those fights. Uh, we also saw in other situations they didn't offer much as the mass BKBs, Yules, Manta came out later on in the game. That his effectiveness was a bit more limited, but. Still, a few of those engagements were largely won because of a well-timed globe. Do you feel like Sanking is perhaps the poor man X, you know, for the same place out that it, probably Boba's going to be playing it in the four? Yeah, I expect it to be a four. I mean, there's like some potential for it to be four of zero. I would like to see four of on something that could contribute more reliably. Could do I, something. I, I really did not. The Marana to me was the big weak point of the draft. Like he did what he could with the hero in the role he was given. But, like, she wasn't hitting that hard. Moonlight Shadow, at times, was okay. And it did have an economic tax on Cloud9. But, like, you go to a big team fight, like, you want to have that Shallow Grave well, or that Burrow Strike. Like, something reliable to actually help you win the fight. I'm not sure how much we, we need to talk about it. But there was a fight where there's, like, four sentries dropped. And Aoi had to buy, like, four gems before he finished an item. So, you know, th there are some effects. You know, yeah, I the mean, there was a support tax. But... Yeah. I think you can get that from a Nyx, and a Nyx offers you a lot more in team fights, for sure. example. So yeah. we'll see what they do. Or even Riki would be another example. Someone who, you know, forces out the sentries and brings a lot more to a team fight with the cloud, potentially. Not really a DC hero. We'll see how they want to run the Sankey. It's a flex pick, could be their off laner, could be their four. Another thing that's different this game, I think, is that they probably haven't picked Abed's hero yet, unless they're gonna run a core silencer. So, I think that's nice. I would. I. Li I think most of the teams, the strong teams, do tend to save their mid pick for fourth or fifth. Yeah. So it can't be counter picked as easily. It has a good matchup. He didn't even have a bad matchup. But I mean, you made that point last game as well. But they yeah. picked this Queen of Pain second. So yeah. it's. But I, I, think, I think it's. I don't think he's on the silence. So. Yeah. Well, I wonder if. Digital Chaos will draft themselves in a way where the Arc Warden will punish them. Because the last game, in particular, like they had no way to deal with Split Push, or at least not very effective way. Mason had to be everywhere to deal with it, which was hard on the Terra Blade. Mm. Um, so I'm expecting the offlaner in particular, like you mentioned, for Forev to, to be something that could repel pushes. Gonna ban the Legion. I, the Batrider, probably what DC wants here. Yeah. I think Cloud9 should ban it. Because Bat Silencer is really strong. And they've already banned the best counter to the lasso. Five seconds remaining. No, Timbersaw? Is, is DC a, a Timbersaw specialist team? Is Abed the 10k Timber? Abed had a couple really good games on the Timbersaw. Okay. Or at least one that I remember watching myself. Or... I guess they're thinking about taking three, like, melee strength heroes now, right? Just a second phase timber before you have any heroes that are really weak against timber is just really weird. Ooh, they're gonna grab the weaver. Sneaky bug. So strong lanes, the order of the day for DC. Yep. Puck is okay against weaver, though. 
But you definitely want more. You definitely want that. Yeah, that follow up stun, like an Earthshaker. Yeah. The LC, the LC uh, ban makes a lot of more sense now. Already one of MSS's best hero. Does Cloud9 have a Bloodseeker? Is the question. Bloodseeker seen as one of the best counters, direct counters to the Weaver. I'm sure MV could play it, but I don't know if they practice it. We're going to see the four position Doom here from uh, Aoi. I mean, it could even be a core Doom. And there is the bat. Yeah, Envy save. does play uh, Doom back in the well, day. LFY ran it for in flame, uh, even though he's technically the offlane player in the mm. safe lane. He got a ton of farm. That's true. Uh, and it was it's pretty strong. I think Doom's a solid hero right now. Actually, he's not super popular. The the safe lane Doom takes me back to the the old iteration of Cloud Nine, where they would pick Doom Envy, and he just jungles for like three minutes, and gives the lane to Aoi as a four position support and just farms in the lane. A very different time where the four position support didn't roam as much. But, you know, like you mentioned, the possibilities there, there's like three to four rows that the Doom can play fairly effectively. Likely a four though. Yeah, now that said, uh, so sometimes it can be tough for him to get his initiation. And uh, this is something that we, with the global to worry about. And this is something we, you and I have been discussing the last yeah, few days yeah, yeah. is, you know, Everyone's viewing Legion as the offlaner you want to deal with Bat, but what happened to a Bat? Why don't we see a Bat? We don't see a Bat as much because the the Shrine got taken away, right? You used to get Shrine at whenever you want, you know, starting from minute zero, but now you have to wait to level five. So a lot of these like offlaners that can't really mess with the safe lane as much aren't like compared to LC directly. Like overwhelming odds is a hell of a laning spell. Abaddon is gonna have a tough time. Now, the reason he's picked here is because he could cleanse himself and then cleanse others. Uh, a way to deal with global. And he itemizes fairly decently against Silencer. Like a Lotus Orb earlier. Yeah, is. you get, I mean, basically you get Greaves, Greaves and then Lotus, you are the yeah. Silencer Bat initiation counter. Yep, pretty much. But that is a decent amount to farm. For an Abaddon, especially. Yeah, <laughs> so. Know, that's in farm well. Yeah, I mean, still could be the four position Doom. We're not entirely sure about that, but it looks like an MSS Abaddon. It's either an Envy Doom or it is a support Doom, and that we will find out soon. So, final round of bans now coming. As for C9, you're either banning an Envy or an Owie hero. I think you're probably banning an Envy hero. They don't have a great objective taker right now. That makes me think Envy's hero has not been selected yet. So, who is your best Envy hero that can take towers, take Roshan? Terror or at Blade. least push. Metamorphosis, Terror Blade. Ooh. Puck Terror Blade has been seen such as a strong dual combo because Puck comes online very early. You get a coil, you get a kill or two, and you pop Metamorphosis for a tower. It's just rinse and repeat. I think we, we saw what the Queen plus Terror Blade could have done last game, and I think Puck Terror Blade does it even better. And I think honestly, Terra Blade is quite good against this particular lineup. Um, you have a very high armor hero against Weaver. Sand King makes him a bit sad. I think that global lasso can be a problem until the Abaddon gets the farm. But yep. I think late game Cloud9 would have the answers for it. Or even like mid game, maybe. In terms of other safe lane pushers, uh, MV does play quite a bit of Juggernaut. Not exactly the best pushing hero, but Healing Ward can be a big threat. Not so good against Batrider Weaver. Like, I don't, yeah, I don't know about if that. If you could spin before you get lasso, it's like... I think you really want a ranged building hitter, ideally. Or someone who's mega tanky, like, maybe... There's always a spin. Bristleback, you know, if you want to go that route. But not exactly the best seizure. Although, let's not forget Abaddon with his uh, Frostmourne, or Curse of Avernus, or whatever they call that spell now, does just enable your team to push very quickly. Doom could just pick out an Alpha Wolf. So even though, like, let's say Juggernaut is selected, even though individually he's not a good pushing hero, his team provides a lot for, to help the push. Hmm. So Cloud9 do ban out the TA. I mean, we imagine it's going to be that Fada Puck mid. The MSS is bad in offlane. Dazzle probably in Pi's hands. So, is Doom for Envy or for Owie? We find out now. 
Selection Slark. number five, it's the Slark. So they good against Batrider. Good against the Silencer. I mean, honestly, good against all these heroes, uh, yeah. except that he's slow and he wants a lot of time to farm. But in terms of like mid to late game matchups, Slark is a great pick. Going to be almost impossible to kill with this selection. What did DC do to respond? They want their Abed hero, likely, barring a crazy core Silencer mid, which I don't really expect. Dragon Knight. Dragon Knight. So you want to play Slark? You want to go late? You're running this greedy Doom support? Great. We're going to come push you. What are you going to do about it, Cloud9? That's the plan for DC. Yeah. I don't think Cloud9 is particularly weak against the push either, though. Like, they could, let's say, weave defensively and just stand in front of the towers. And I'm not sure how DC could push and fight into that. But I think the most important player for me for both teams is going to be for Cloud9 MSS. He needs to have a good lane. He needs to get that Greaves. He is supposed to be the guy that ties this lineup together against the global. Whereas I think for Digital Chaos, um, as always for them, it's about how Boba roams, whether he could control the mid lane for Abed and allow him to, to snowball. I'm a little sad that Abed's not getting more of like a cure that can take over the game. You know, obviously Meepo. I mean, that. Out. Invoker, maybe. Didn't we cast a Hellraiser game where. Was a swift ending? Kaiser on the show. Kaiser, team. no, yeah, Kaiser on the, I believe, Dragon Knight, and then they had 33 on Clockwork, and we were like 55 minutes in the game, and it was like a DK Clockwork just like taking over with their damage output and stuff. So that's true, but it's not like a it's traditional not, it's strong just, like gamer. It's kind of like when Dendi used to be, you know, one of the top mids, and we anytime Dendi was not on, you know, Quap, TA, Pug, Pudge, something yeah, like Pudge, yeah. like some some playmaker, we're like. Oh, it's not really a Dendi hero. It's like, yeah, he can play those well, but and maybe that's what the team needs. It's not flashy. It's not your edgy, emo, 17-year-old mid player. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Abed's not very edgy, though. I will say. I, he I, seems very mellow. He's a very well-mannered, super polite guy. Yeah. Maybe just internally, but he does not show that to the world. What happened to the Meepo, dude? Yeah, the Meepo and the Invoker. What happened? Abed being forsaken by the NA team. waters have changed him. I don't think he's changed. I think DC have told him <laughs> he's not welcome to play those anymore. They don't believe in those heroes. Shame. I, I mean, to be fair, I don't think it would have been a good invoker game, for sure. Doom, Slark will make that hero but Meepo, potentially though. pretty miserable. I think Meepo would have been a fine, fine one for this game. Yeah, I mean, Doom's still annoying. Like, Doom's annoying for any carry. I think Dragon Doom's Knight's annoying, period. I think Dragon Knight's probably one of the best heroes to, to be doing. Yeah, yeah. Or like, do not get As long him. as he's in dragon form, he's pretty much doing his thing, so. That is one thing I like about this Dragon Knight selection. Alright, let us get ourselves in the game. Players exchanging pleasantries. Is there a particular draft that you personally like more? I like DC's draft more. I okay. think Cloud Nines is too a little too greedy. Uh, but I do want to look at how the lanes are going to match up. So it's going to be MSS on the off lane of Baden up against a Weaver Silencer. Some pretty heavy harass there. Yep. Fada will be mid uh, as the Puck versus a Dragonite. Which generally is pretty Dragonite favored from what I've seen. Uh, even if the Puck is a little better harassing early, like DK just kind of shrugs it off. Uh, so I think that lane looks good for DC. Safe lane, you've got a Slark against Batrider. That's really easy for Slark because of the way the Dark Pack interacts with the Napalm. So I think that lane should go well. Uh, I think really where the game hinges is the Doom's movement in the first 10 to 15 minutes and what Aoi can get accomplished. And then in some of those mid-game fights, they are going to leap onto 4 here. This is a great way to start the party in the bottom lane. They get the Poison Touch slow. This is the Wind Lace. I don't think 4 dies here, but he will take hefty punishment. He's got a South, so he's not, he's not happy with that. He had to use South now, but it's... At least get the wave. Wait, wait, Pilate Eye is coming back in. Can he get in range for the Poison Touch? Yeah, he does. One more hit. Salve is going to get canceled. He got most of the regen in, but so, still. Yeah, Forev really wanted to ensure that those creeps did follow him all the way up. Yeah. They lose vision walking up the hill, and so if you don't turn around and aggro them, they will just turn around, and then he might not get the experience. But instead, he's blown a Salve, and he's lost most of his tango. He's going to get well. touched again. If that poison. Yeah, there you go. Touch him. Man, Pilate Eye. What a mean guy. So, yeah, I think... I think... I like DC's draft better, assuming they have a decent lane stage, which I think they should be able to. 4F can always go to the jungle. I don't think there's too much C9 can do about that early. 
Maybe Doom tries to harass him. Interesting way to play Doom mid. Eats a big creep and just comes in and threatens to thunderclap on the bed. I'm not sure how much he's actually accomplishing here, apart from just taking Fodak's experience. And Infernal Blade selected us too, just harassing hard. Okay. And DK still CSing away. <laughs> this hero, man. They're dual laning him and he's still even with the fuck almost. Yeah. A lot of the early dual lane, one of the objectives you want to accomplish is obviously trying your best to harass out, but also trying to deny the, the range creeps. And look at the nuke coming back in, double nuking a bed. He might just get burned down, pops a fairy fire, he will survive, and the south will get used. I think seeing all of this, uh, Doom might just go away and eat another creep. Yeah, it's a lot of commitment though. Fada's going to slip a bit in the level department. Already Abed level 3, the bottle's coming soon, assuming he gets these last few last hits. Looks like they won't be contested, so he probably will. I jinxed him. Bottom side looks like uh, Batrider. Still in a lot of trouble. Yeah, this bottom lane is rough. Oh, well, maybe not. He's actually level 3 already. Pi still level 1. Envy still level 2. Yeah, I think he's doing fine. Not getting a lot of farm, but... Yeah, he's going to get his levels. He's going to go to the jungle at some point. Like, you can't really win the lane against Slark. Yeah. Oh, you got all those napalm stacks? Well, I could just remove them, so... How greedy do you think Envy will be this game? Like, whether he's gonna get a Hannah Midas? Yeah, not? like, item selection, how much time is he spending farming versus ganking? I think seeing the fact that there's a Dragonite mid on the other side, I, I don't think he could afford to be too greedy. He might go back for a Hannah Midas if he thinks the game is, you know, doing okay after the Shadow Blade, but... Likely, I think he's going to go all fighting items. Owie with the hate for Abed. Yeah. This Infernal Blade harass is doing much more than I anticipated. You got to keep in mind this is a Dragon Knight, and he's still feeling the pressure. Imagine if this is like, I don't know, a squishy Shadow Fiend or something like that. Another Blade comes on. They pop the fire. He's going to tank. He claps him, and Abed is going to be going down. Dragon Knight giving first blood. Not a sight that you see too often these and days. And Owie gets the last hit. That is huge. Yeah. A commitment. Just kept him whittling down his HP, no support for him mid. Bulba was busy trying to take over the bottom lane while they sent the Batrider to the jungle. So the way DC has chosen to lane it, actually a little bit greedier. Not bad, does get punished. Still comes back and get back to farming. Still out leveling Fada, so. I mean, end of the day for Dragonite, your most support objective is get a fast level six, try to push that tower. He's still on track for that. Yep, he, you know. Ace rune, Fata, we'll take it up. You know the biggest surprise for me is, oh, they might actually force a kill on a bed. Forces them to actually skill the stun and use it here on, on Aoi. The biggest surprise for me is that MSS is able to get 16 CS in this offlane against a silencer harassing him with glaze and stuff. I guess the Aphotic Shield, even without having access to that early shrine. He also just started with a ton of regen as well. Yeah, eight tangles. This, as they are, again, pressuring Abed in the mid lane. This time forces a TP. Owie with the committed dual lane. Finally, Bulba's going to rotate and help his friend. Abed keeps on bottling up. Nice delivery there. Mioa 4 have in the bottom lane. Actually getting aggressive here on Pi. Trying to roast him. The napalm stacking up. Not going to commit too far. Let's respect that tower. But yeah, finally, DC have decided like they do need to help this mid lane at least a little bit. They're going to bring Dubu in as well. They might try to go for a kill on Fada. It's only the level 1 phase shift, definitely a killable target if they can get in position and no direct radiant vision of this flank, but I think he may have seen the silencer with that ward up the hill. Yeah, Fatas have been aggressively using his orb to harass as well, so you could catch him in between orbs cooldown and maybe force a kill. But he's also doing a number on Bed. Abed has Fairy Fire, sorry, not Fairy Fire, rain, Infused Raindrops. And he's got all of the charges burn already. And now they force the kill. The Fire Brief will miss. Here comes Dubu as well as Boba. They want Fata you Burrow Strike. Go Shit hit. Doom. Oh, he's got the fire turned on. He actually doesn't take any damage. And now they are focusing different targets. Fata wants a bed, and he is going to get him. Wow. 2v3, they get the kill. Doom. Very strong hero at this stage of the game. Got the uh, Alpha Wolf creep now, so exchanging aura a bit. He ran into the creep wave into three heroes and they just ignore him. Like, how many supports can you say that about? Maybe Night Stalker? Oh, if he could get an Inferno Blade on Dubu, that's a kill. Well, he needs to activate Shrine now, which still is a win for Aoi there. You, you force a position 5 support to activate a Shrine and the mid doesn't get it? Feels bad for Abed.
Maui, again, just coming up huge for C9. Whenever they win, it really does feel like he always has a big game in the laning stage, and that is, at least for now, the case here. He's got the Scorched Earth ready. Mm -hmm. They're bringing in reinforcements in the form of the Dazzle. That does leave the NB Slark bottom. He's completed a hood, Lumi, so this is definitely suggesting that he wants to do a lot of early fighting. What is this? Hood is Slark? Is this the new meta? <sighs> yeah, if he loves this hood, huh? I mean, is this a good hood game? Last time he got it, last game, we, we said it was kind of all right. Not I think really. it's a little, it's better this game, but it's not amazing. I mean, it's not a Shadow Blade, that's for sure. What is he going to do with his hood? Frontline tank. All right. There you go. Tank Slark. The Tark. Thank you, Bulba. <laughs> that was so on time. Meanwhile, big dive happening on the mid lane here. Dubu's gonna get poison touched up. I think he might be the target here. Silence coming out from Fata. Aoi running amok with the fire turned on. Coil's gonna get hit, and Dubu is gonna just get burned down by the fire. The question is, are they gonna get a little bit more? No, really good spread there by Cloud9. Abed went dragon form, but did not have the vision and or the range for the dragon fell on the puck. With the main here, they could have potentially killed, but not able to do it. He went for those two early points in Dragon Blood to try and withstand this harass, but it also means he doesn't have the third point in the Breathe Fire. Yep. Which might have helped them secure some of these kills. I think Cloud9 has really clipped the Dragon's Wing. Like, it, I. I, Doom I, has won them the laning stage. Like, Aoi has, has, has won them the lane. Super hard. And he's coming back in again here. Dragon Tail being used offensively again. Could not get in range for the uh, Infernal Blade. Like, I compare his effectiveness to, say, Bulbas, for example. Aoi's level 5. They've killed mid multiple times. They've won 2v3 in skirmishes, forced out TPs, given Envy more space. Meanwhile, Bulba, level 3. Spent a lot of time in the jungle, spent a lot of time in a lane solo, and still hasn't gotten really anything done. I, I think another way to look at the situation is that Cloud9 has two uh, kind of independent laner, right? You could leave the Stark alone. You could leave Abaddon alone. Whereas I feel like the Weaver needs a little bit more help, and also the uh, does he the Bat Rider in particular. I consider Weaver and Bat like should be independent. Right, but in the matchup that they're getting, right, like Envy beats the Bat Rider, so San King felt like he needed to help there. Yeah, the Weaver probably doesn't need any help. But Envy got help early. Dazzle was just sitting bottom. I think it's just Doom has done more. You than, think he's just doing more with this hero? Okay. Because like Daz uh, Silencer was also parked top. Because I, I feel like the San King could sit mid to pro like I, I don't know why they left a bet alone. I think he should have been there early, well, but now it's probably too late as Abed gets ganked out again. Casual try lane and yeah. another kill. Oh, he's on the run now. He's got that Infernal Blade. If he gets a hit on Dubu, he might be done for. Yeah, Triangle Boots are broken, so that's tough. By the way, that's his second Infused Raindrops. Those things are costly. Normally, mids just get one and that'll be the it. It'll carry you into the mid game, you know. <laughs> his goal is just being blown through so rapidly. This Dragon Eye is not going to scale. You can see it in the net worth. 1,300 net worth down. 20 CS down and the raindrop is certainly part of that too as they look to retreat in the middle Ooh. lane. They're desperate to make a play, but they don't have a blink on bat. They don't even have the drums. They just don't have that good gap close until either Bulba gets a blink or 4F does. 4F didn't even have ultimate coming for this gank, so I'm not sure what are you, it would have even more worked. But. Cloud9, so much more effective with all their early movements here. And the hate train comes right back for Abed. Why not? <laughs> it's working. They've got a bail now. It'll be an even easier kill, regardless of the raindrops. They're he waiting for Coil. He tries to make the smoke. He's like, hey guys, guess what? Three heroes in my lane again. Team? 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 There you go. No chance. I think Fata really didn't want to use that Coil. Save it for the next gank. Gets a haste right now. My god. Ay, 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 Lumi. Ay, ay, ay. Well, here's the thing, right? Like, Cloud9 never struggle in the laning stage, or at least when they have good, actual good drafts. Um, they don't struggle. What ends up struggling for the Cloud9 is the Cloud9 throws in the mid game. And we're approaching the mid game for now. We'll, we'll see if uh, MV in the bottom side might be a little bit trouble if Forev flies over him, but it's going to be Puck porting back in. It's going to try to chase down Forev. As the Haste rune can commit for it, Fada going deep for this one. Need like four or five auto attacks to get this kill for Ev. Jukes into the trees and will end up escaping. Top lane, I think they're gonna try to set up a gank. Doom is available. And Mason has very high levels of Kuchi, so they're not gonna be able to catch him. Good attempt, but. 
Well, clearly Cloud9 has won the lanes, Lumi. I don't think there's a whole lot of dispute about that. They now have nearly a 4,000 gold lead. All their cores are online. All their supports are doing well. How do DC get back in this game? Uh, and how do they have to adapt their game plan from perhaps what it was initially? Hold that thought here, MV. If Orif can get this lasso right no now. No lasso skilled. Oh, well, maybe, maybe skill it now? Just leveled up? Yeah, he did, but... Yeah. And he missed that pile I die now knowing he needs to get out too. Abed is coming. The smoke is there. Bulba's gonna wrap around. He could find two. Envy actually has very little mana right now though. The soul range just pulled down. So they'll settle for the pile I die kill. So the trade may come top. But the Weaver is a tough takedown. Yeah. I don't think this particular duo can do it unless they get that Doom off. You really have to Doom him mid Sakuchi or before he gets it off, else he's likely going to escape. Now he waits. Doom. Lunges nope. in, gets off the Doom. Face into the trees, the dust gets popped, and they are going to try to squash that bug. Orb comes through, kill secured. Another clean kill from C9. This Doombringer, man, my goodness. He's 3-3 three and three involved in 100% of Cloud9's kills. Well, you said it earlier, whenever Cloud9 wins, it's Aoi showing up big, and currently he is showing up big. In terms of what DC needs to do, levels. They need Dubu to get 6, and they need Sanking to, well, not get to blink, but... Uh, Ideally, get to level seven so that he could be have the the max range of the burrow strike, and just play catch up. Uh, Dragon Knight needs to catch up. Bat Rider needs his blink. Just bunker down for the next five minutes or so, and then uh, fight once you have your your key items and your key levels. But global, I think, is the the starting point. C9 coming through, Lumi. They had a very poor start to this tournament. The first three days are ones they would soon forget. But day four, looking good for them right now. now this is Cloud9 we're talking about. <laughs> Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a laning stage, you know? It's, it's fine. The question is, what are you going to do after the lanes? What, so If it was any other team, I would just say, like, yeah, this, they're looking great. You know, nothing to worry about here. The game should be theirs. They have a Slark. They've got way better late game. They've got a Doom support that's super farm. You know, Fado's on the puck. He's a star on that hero. But just never feel confident <laughs> really making any predictions of when it comes to this team. We did reveal someone for a second. I do believe Envy already pinged out there's a ward here, so. As his Shadow Dance loses the passive. Trying to bait them in, showing himself. DC are not falling for uh -oh. it. Dubu is... Dubu has the smoke broken. And he's looking. Oh, Dubu. My friend. Oh, Fada ain't his friend, that's for damn sure. Bell comes through with the orb connecting. C9, crush him. Another pick off for them. The hits just keep on coming. Meanwhile, DC are playing catch up. Abed now gonna transition into those drums. Try to get back into the game. Orev's still working on his blink, but it's getting close. Bulba, quite a bit farther off. You know, we've talked about Kaka Sand Cane and that 15 minute mark being like the dream blink timing if you have a really great game. Bulba, not that close to it. They'll need some me time, but yeah. this is not the place to farm with Owie lurking in the, the confines of the trees. During the drafting stage, I kind of compare Sand King as a poor man Nyx for the four position support. And you could kind of see why in this particular scenario here. He's level 6. Normally, Nyx Assassin is a threat at this point. He's disappearing off the map. You need to start centering up. But for a Sand King at this point in the game, he's actually not a hero still because he needs to farm Blink. And this is where I think you, you brought up the comparison to Kaka. He had no trouble, you know, level 1 to 5, helping out lanes. What he had trouble was is getting Blink Dagger on time. And I think... Boba Hero is experiencing some of that as well. Envy's moving in. They want to jump Abed again. And there's the pass. Good connection. Now the Veil follow-up. Abed tries to stand his ground. He's still got those raindrops keeping him alive, but also might lose his second set. And if he dies as well, that's going to be a tough price to pay. Envy instead turning back, working on Bulba. A little revenge there with the Dark Pact. Bulba chills under cover of Sandstorm and now re-engages. They commit the global for this. The last one as well. Envy, where's your hood now, my friend? Down he goes and MSS on the run. He's already blown the borrowed time. Highlight die has the grave, but it's only level one. If he walks in to use it, Orev's gonna punish him. In fact, he might die anyway, just like that. Somehow, it's always Cloud9 and Cloud9. They just can't escape their legacy. Three deaths, crucial well, ones, avoidable ones. They did get the tier two top. 
you asked what they needed to do, global, and get a kill. And of course, it helped the fact that Cloud9 was feeling a little bit cavalier on the mid lane, not respecting the fact. Oh, Burrow Strike catches him after the Orb. Fata joins in the fray one by one by one. The Cloud9 special. Can Fata make it out? No, he cannot. Aoi looks on as his teammates <laughs> what is, just feeds. What is with this team? Oh, Lumi. I mean, credit to DC because they timed that well, right? They uh, Boba saw an opening. He baited them in. The Burrow Strike Global instant lasso timed it right while the Dark Pact had not been used. Otherwise, that's a complete fail of an opening. But but MSS, like, he was in there. His Dark Pact was over. Sorry, not Dark Pact. Uh, his ultimate, rather. Yeah. Borrowed time. And he just stood there among four heroes. DC was like, okay, who do you think you are? We're going to just kill you. And they did. It really, you know, as someone, like, if you're looking at this team and you're you're wondering, like, okay, let's say they get into the main event, they're in the lower bracket, how far can they go? You're not going to necessarily get off to an early lead like this. You can't make these mistakes against teams in the main event. So they, they still have a lot of polishing to do. I imagine, as the coach, Stan Kane is probably, like, shaking his head a little bit. But good news for Cloud9 now. They are going to react well to this. They know the Globals on cooldown. The Lasso and Dragon Form expended, and they walk right into the Roche Pit. It's a great shot calling there. Aegis should be theirs. With that Aegis, let's see what else they do. I do want to talk more about Envy's selection because he did pipe. Co he com completed the pipe. So yeah. twice now he's gone for a pipe. This is a very early one on the Slark, earlier than the Arc Warden. I like the pipe more this game because of the uh, obviously the Sand King, Firefly, and a lot of the Napalm damage is going to get mitigated for himself and his first allies. But at the same time, you have a pipe Slark. Like, what is his effectiveness in this mid game? Normally, you have a Shadow Blade running around getting kills. So does he feel like, you know, DC's going to be too prepared for that? Does he plan to group up as a Slark with his team and fight? Because that's what Pipe gives you. It seems like. It, it just feels very different from the standard they've got a pack, Slark game They've plan. got Pack Leader Zara, you know? He doesn't need damage items, let me. Okay. And they got a Pilot that Weave, right? Like, let's go with that train of thought. They got the uh, the Frostmourne from uh, Abaddon, or rather Curse of Avernus. You figured it out, LD. They just uh, get all these small ways to get damage, and Pipe Slark's going to carry them. Fada's the carry, right? Fail, double damage and bottled up. Okay. Maybe that's the idea. To be fair, I, I think given their lineup, like there is some semi-carry potential, potential uh, potentially, from a Doom and a Puck, but yep. whether itemizing, itemizing is not really to be carries, like how he's building up a buckler. The you think that's a Yules. you think that's a casual buckler or is he going griefs? Now we in trouble now. Epicenter being revved up in the one. top lane. He's got the fire. He is tanky. Can they slay the beast? Uh, he's getting no oh, TV they, support. Yes, yeah. okay. And they'll take a tower here too. But the trade is there for Cloud9. Looking for this tower bottom. Still, that one kill, 750 gold swing because there is there was a substantial lead for Cloud9. That was a pretty big streak ended. Now they're gonna find oh. Envy, but he does dark pack off the last. He jumps in. Jumps into the dragon tail. Yes, Envy. Well, Aegis down. Will his team come to support him? MSS now with the shield, trying to dish out and do what he can. But the Global's now committing. Dark Pack's stacked off too, baiting them in deeper and deeper. Perhaps Envy really is that diabolical genius. Now 4F's overextended. He's going to go down. MSS in the trees. Dragon Tail comes through. Don't think he makes it out of there. All the while, Dubu's like plus two, plus two, plus two. Already plus they eight. They doomed the Dragon and Knight. comes back into this fight. They doomed the Dragon Knight. Wally's in Dragon form. Aoi charges back forward. They need this Puck to get involved, but Fauna's already committed what he can. Doesn't have the damage. What is happening right now with Cloud9? These are just not good fights that are selecting. <laughs> I know you're trying to bring down a laugh here, but I'm just, I'm just watching this game. I'm really trying to keep it together. They're not on the same page. I, I mean, I think clearly Envy expected more more heroes to come in. You know, like he expected the whole team to be there, to have like a, a fight ready at the right time. He's trying to bait with the Aegis, but they weren't there. I don't know if someone didn't have a TP. Like we'd have to go back and watch the replay. Yep. Uh, if they were disagreeing with him and then came reluctantly, but I, I think they're just not quite on the same page. And then it's just little errors, like you mentioned, like, Dooming a Dragonite who's already in dragon form. Like, the shot calling, it seems too chaotic in these fights. Like, it sounds like there's, it, it feels like there's like three people all yelling out calls That's at once. That's exactly Cloud9. That's, you described it. Three people yelling. Two people with mind grains going on. Um, what they need to do right now is finish that uh, Greaves on Doom. I, I assume he's going Greaves because these globals are kind of wrecking them pretty hard. 
And hold that thought here as Aoi runs for Coil. Coil is good though. They're okay. going to find Forever off the bat. Lasso available, but Bulba getting forced back. Can Abed get active in this fight? He's got the Dragon Tail. They try to bring the Batrider down. They will pummel him into submission. Now MSS also dropping low. Gets off the save potentially, but Bulba comes in. Phase shift is going to dodge that epicenter. Woo! Thought it might even kill him off here. He can blink back in potentially and go for that silence killing combo. Meanwhile, Pi going for the TP up. Uh, no, no, not going to make it. He gets denied. Now the chase is on Mason, wanting MSS2. Borrowed time, already committed. Breathe Fire doesn't quite hit, but still they lock down Owie. But in from the rear comes Envy, and I believe also momentarily we're going to see that Puck arrive as well. DC struggling to finish off some of these pesky tanks. The hood is paying off. Now Abed's in trouble. He may go down, but the late global. Oh, that could be big. Chasing after Envy. Got all, focus got down in time. The pipe. The pipe and the old save the day. On I'll the back fine. line, Fata again, is he in the fight? He's gonna get stunned up, Fata needs to oh, phase and no. he dies! Alright, Envy coming back in, he doesn't have much mana left, he does I, have a soul ring though. I'm hearing a lot of come back hold on, in. No, hold on, hold come on, back in. come back in, he misses the pounce, Abed has minus armor, he hits the sun, Aoi pops a drum, the bongos, go, 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 they don't get anything, now Forever comes back in. Alright, you know what the problem is with Cloud9? Their draft has one stun, right? It's the puck. They can't burst anybody down in the Dream Coil. And they didn't have Doom that fight. That's like, th maybe with the Coil and the Doom, it's enough. Right. And this, th th that's the reason why these fights are like lasting so long. That's why it looks so clowny. And uh, it also doesn't help that Envy's been missing his pounces. But I think as it moves on, like, it, he's going to get better with that because he now has a Shadow Blade finish. Yeah, he'll get the Fasher, yeah, yeah. you know, or get like, like a Yasha so he can chase them more effectively. So on, Scotty. on one hand, we could say like the Cloud9 communication is perhaps going a little bit haywire, but on another, it's just that their lineup is perhaps not very good for these kind of engagements. I, I think their lineup is good for like the one pick, not for chaotic sk skirmishes and, and team fights in the jungles. Well, all the while, Mason continues to farm away and Abed continues to catch up. He completed the blink, Silver Edge now being queued up. So their cores are getting back to this game in a big way, but the supporting cast is really struggling. You've basic, basically got a quad core emerging for Cloud9. Very much not the case for DC. And if you have too much farm concentrated in your carries and you're against the Doom Lumi, yep. history tells us that can be painful. Well, he's building towards the Lincolns, Mason at least. Is, uh, so he's going to be fairly resistant to that. But I'm actually uh, more worried for DC. Uh, because the Radiance is coming online for Abaddon. So far, the Abaddon hasn't really been a big factor. Like, he's trying to put shields on people, heal allies, but once that Radiance is online, I just don't think DC have a proper solution. So you're really strongly favoring DC as this heads later? No, I'm flavoring Cloud9. Oh, sorry, uh, Cloud9. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, okay. the, the pipe might seem very awkward on the Slark, but it's really allowing their team to survive these team fights. Imagine if they don't have the pipe. I think these team fights, they just get completely ran over. And I think Envy is not really playing as the true one. Uh, he is kind of sharing the, the wealth and the glory and the responsibility with MSS. I think MSS moving forward is going to do... And with the Doom. Yeah. About this is definitely like a more of a team effort thing compared to last game where it was really Envy with, on the Arc Ward and doing more you know solo stuff. As wards, peppering the map, wants to do something with them. Here comes Forev though, sneaking up. No detection on Cloud9, aside from a Dustin Owie's stash, I believe, or maybe his backpack. So here comes DC. They Epicenter. might want to find a key lasso to start this fight if they can just grab MSS. They can really go right. No, they're going to global. And now they pull back the puck, controlling him nicely with the epicenter revving through. Instantly fought it down. Now MSS on the run. They can get more, at least two. Probably that's it. Envy's far enough away. Should be able to get back towards safety. Just got to save a stun. Borrow time comes out, but Bulba still has a burrow strike. No escape for Mojo Storm Stout. As you mentioned, the Radiant's coming soon, but it won't be yet. Down he goes. Another couple of crucial kills as DC's war engine keeps on gaining steam. Almost a dead even game numerically. The BKB, I believe, completed now and flying out for Abed. So he becomes a fearsome force in the front lines. Almost almost like making life hard for Owie, right? Now you really do want to doom that Dragonite with a BKB. But. Well, he's he is working towards Heaven's Halber. Uh Looks like it is just a casual buckler for the armor that Doom very much so needs. Um, if he could get off the disarm on the Dragonite, you know, much of that BKB is going to be somewhat useless. And of course, there is a solo crest on, on Aoi as well. Here comes a three-man smoke with the, with the team. 
And Doom is available. Vada smoked up. Creeping forward with Owie and Pi by his side. This trio squirms through the jungle, looking for an opening. And Dubu's the man they'll find. He doesn't have global anyway. Put down the silencer. Will almost certainly go. They get that veil off. One more slash and they'll finish the trick with the Infernal Blade. Last hit going to Owie. One step closer to that Heaven's Halberd. As far as item progression here on DC, the Lincolns is online for Mason. Now working back towards the Diffusal Blade. Batrider, four staff already completed. BKB coming next. Bulba going to be the pipe carrier should this game go on long enough. A gem is what Silencer wants. So. Not the sexiest items for DC, but they are casually crewing theirs. Honestly, still pretty impressive that they didn't completely crumble after that laning stage, let me have to say. Yeah, I mean, it helped that Cloud9 gave them two team fights in a row to put them right back in the game. How do you feel about Lincoln's uh, coming out from the Slark? Hmm. It does block some very key initiation spells, but, you know, to me, it seems very easy for, let's say, the Diffusal Blade that's coming out of Weaver to just, you know, pop it right off and go from there. Obviously, there's a lot of ways to break it, right? Like, four staff on the Bat Rider, you've got the Dragon Tail. So, I think it's okay. I think it'll be better late game, and if it turns into more of, like, a split push scenario. Yeah. But, but it also means it's more time. Like, Envy has a lot of gold, and he does not really hit all that hard in these fights. He's, as you no, mentioned, very much doesn't. a utility hero. Yeah. But I think that suits the way they want to play this. They want the Abaddon to be kind of a secondary carry. They want the Doom to dish out damage. So just more utility, more tank is is the game plan they've chosen. Like yeah. They decided not to put all their eggs in the Slark basket. And as the team fight goes on, Essence Shift is going to be, you know, supplementing the damage a little bit. You know, you were kind of joking with things like... Pack leaders or I mean, all of that small stuff does help. So um, yeah, the bongos, the, the bongos, the bongos are out of the bongos, uh, out of charges for for Aoi. But th just their mere presence, Lumi, it inspires ah. the masses. Not really. All right, he's gonna go on the bed. A bed actually just laughs, and oh, oh envy. Dark Pact used, and now Envy gets wrangled in the river, pulled back in, a quick feed for him, and a huge kill for DC. Timed it just right with the global. Well, that's where Lincolns would have saved you. I mean, at the same time, him hitting a bed three times and accomplishing nothing is also questionable at best, I guess. Yeah, positioning in a different way would mean he doesn't need the Lincolns either. So. Yeah. Definitely arguments to be made. Um, both sides. One one small thing about the Lincolns is that the the mono region aspect of it is also to me somewhat underappreciated a lot of times. Granted, he has a soul ring already, but it still helps. Epicenter comes out on the right side and it's gonna catch the Doom. Doom down to half HP instantly, and Aphotic Shield brings him out a little bit, but he runs back in. He pops off the Doom on. Who? Didn't actually get it off. Mid-cast animation went down with the BKB. Too much hesitation from Aoi and also just too much chain stun. Now turning back, finding that follow-up stun, finding that follow-up kill. Thought is down. Envy's lone death has turned into four. DC, a Roche as well as they scrap and claw to hit that seven and seven mark, heading down the stretch to their final match. Yeah, they really believed they could have challenged the Roshan. They did have the puck, so maybe going for a steel play was definitely in the books but unfortunately great vision by DC that's how they've been winning all of these fights was able to actually catch Doom to begin it and uh, I believe Doom stood on this side of the river and was seen by the ward across the river so this side you're saying yes and he was seen by you know, this ward over here and uh, as a result the team fight started the way it did MV walks in this can't be happening again a team with like a dupe slark crushes the lanes. The pucks have a great start. The Abaddon's doing well off lane. Their lineup scales really well. They have a really strong mid game. But and they're not building items to scale, right? Envy has a hood first. Like, well, dude. and then they're still dying. That's the crazy part. Yeah. Like it, it just felt like Cloud9 should be in the driver's seat, and they have somehow allowed DC to wrest that control away from them. I also think that the the laning stage didn't tell like the full the full picture because. DC also weren't really at the full fighting force. They didn't have Global then, they didn't have Blink Lasso then. So Abed I has this double damage rune Blink. He is ready to rumble. Okay, not gonna jump. And Shadow Blade coming out too. 
Silver Edge, not exactly seen as a counter to uh, Abaddon, but very good against him. So what you can do is you break his ability to activate his ultimate as a Passively, passive, yeah. and then you could just chain stun him to death, which is something that you know Abaddon, on papers, is very resistant against. So even MSS can't feel too confident. So you think it's mainly for the Abaddon? I mean, it's also just like good scaling damage item for for DK, but yeah, mainly for the Abaddon. I guess it breaks the essence shift, right? Do you do you lose your charges on it, or you just can't get any more? Um, I don't actually know how that. Works. I think you you can't get any more. Uh, I'm pretty sure you still retain what you got. That'd be pretty broken if it yeah. just broke. It's pretty strong. Well, MSS does have his radiance, glowing with the fury of a thousand suns. Do they just change the gameplay? Is it now? Let's take it late. Let's abuse our quad core. They have to. And go. They 40, don't have any. 60, 70 yeah. minutes. They don't have any options to just fight early because I just don't think they are in a position to win fights. They need to itemize to outlast the global. Whether it's to find items that could dispel the silence or just be tanky enough to survive through it. That's sneaking in. Has the invis rune. Double damage rune active. Big opportunity here. And who have they found? It's Mojo Stormstout. Caught out. Lasso's going to bring him back. He does get healed up just a little, but the positioning of DC is such that I don't know that MSS gets any help. They're going to try. pi has got the grave. They keep him alive longer, but still no reinforcements really coming in. Off split push, he has fought it. They're going to stun up the Dazzle, kill him instead. Now the Abaddon goes down two. It's two for the price of one. Dupu even holds the global. All the while, just a little plink, plink, plink from Fada. The puck that could will finish off this tower. And Envy shoving in the top lane. So the Dazzle as a pick has really not done much, and this is not because Pi has been playing it poorly, it's just that the lineup he's against, first you're up against Global, so it's hard to actually Global, or so sorry, use your Grave, properly, yeah, yeah, at a good time. And secondly, DC just chases so well with so much damage over time spell that, it, sure, you could Grave, but as we saw there, like, DC just sticks on the target, and they'll kill him eventually, and they'll kill you too, so. I think the Dazzle's second pick has been punished very heavily. I, I feel like the Dazzle's effectiveness last game wasn't that high either. His weave was doing a lot, but the great uh, happened. Running through. So tower gets denied. Uh, by the way, also, MSS did get denied in that last game. So. Yep. Uh, nice play by C9. Still, though, another death for the C9 squad. The abatting goes down. For Not what you want when you're going Radiance and trying to farm to the late game. For those of you guys that haven't seen or play Abaddon too much, you can deny yourself with your... Uh, your little heal slash nuke, the mist coil. It does take HP from yourself. And if you use it right about to die, you can just deny yourself. Really hard to do in the, the middle four heroes though. So that's the impressive thing there. An even game on paper. Just feels like DC have had all the momentum for some time now. Cloud9, get it together. While this is not a must win game for them, they ultimately they control their own fate. I mean, every game is a must-win game for Cloud9, I think. It's important for a number of reasons. If they win this, then it gets Hellraisers. They may, it may not matter the outcome of that series. Like, it's possible if Hellraisers loses their next game and C9 wins this, I think they go through no matter what, because they right, have one right. win to Hellraisers 4. So in that sense, it does matter. Um, and then also it gives them the insurance where even if Hellraisers wins one, the best Hellraisers can do is catch them and then force the tiebreaker. So it's still relevant in that regard. You can also make the morale argument, but hold that thought because here come Cloud9 charging in. Envy with the link. It's Dubu in position to break the smoke, but not the Invis. He gets up the global nice and early to start the fight. Can they follow this up? Coming through. Oh, oh my god. Drills them with the Epi. Huge combo, but the damage isn't fully there. They need more from Abed. Pumping it in as best he can. Fada's almost finished. Forev roasting him up in a sauna of ice and fire. They do start to fall. Now turning back for MSS. Blasting him around with the flame break. The burrow connection. Two for two. They got the Dragon Knight. Cloud9 salvaging the fight decently at that, but now Owie being run over. The big bad carry of this engagement should be Mason with the defusal blade charges ready. Can he find more kills? Owie a bit too tanky. The evasion, the armor, saving his life. It looked real grim there for Cloud9, but the pipe paid off. <laughs> the pipe actually did do a lot. Man, that team fight started terribly for Cloud9. They, they found the target that they want to kill first, which is really the silencer, but he still got off the global. And then they got, what, triple man Burrow Strike into an epicenter? Such good position. That looked like the, the fight was absolutely over. And then you're like, wait, 
DC is actually not doing enough damage because of the Now pipe. they are. Now yeah. there's an MKB on Mason, which okay, you did not have in that last fight. That definitely helps, but at the same time, Cloud9 is working on double Heaven's Halberg. So if you could get off a disarm on either the Dragon Knight or on the Weaver, then you could take him out of the fight, BKB or not, for a long time. And that's going to be something that uh, Cloud9 is looking towards you. But at the same time, Cloud9 in the next fight, what they need to really concern themselves with is damage output. That team fight lasted for a long time, and Cloud9 just, it felt like they couldn't kill anybody. Definitely feels like the Slark will want a damage item. Okay, he picks Echo up Echo Saber. Yeah. It's secured pretty late Echo Saber, but it is a value right. pickup on Slark with the way Essence Shift works. Normally you see this item grabbed very early because it also enhances your farm potential a lot. Yep. <laughs> Missed some of that value. The Silver Edge is now complete on Abed. This could be the difference maker for what you mentioned, just killing the Abaddon, chain stunning him with no passive borrow time auto activation available. Also, the damage reduction against the Radiance carry, nothing to sneeze at his 4F, charges into 5, and just a drop the gem. He drops the, the gem. The global goes down. They're going to commit on the Abaddon, but they don't have the chain stun follow up without the lasso. MSS should be fine. He will get off the borrow time here, stays alive. But still on the run, they might get this kill anyway. There's a blink available. Abed doesn't want to risk it. That was a huge win, win for Cloud9. They just bought a gem for uh, Eternal Envy. He was carrying it, and then Batrider came in with his own gem, and then just got absolutely trucked. So now there's two gems available in Cloud9, zero for DC. And now the Shadow Blade is going off for Envy. Like, there's just not enough detection. For, for the side of DC to deal with it right now. Bit of a game of ping pong between the two squads as Envy charges in, looking to return serve. Abed blinking away at the last possible moment. Roshan spawning soon. Soon, but not soon enough. Two minutes from now, Bat will be up. They'll probably have global again. 70 seconds to go on that. So instead, they'll try to secure the map control to set up for that next Rosh. C9. Clustering around the enemy shrine, farming their jungle. They'll do a little de-warding here, get their own wards down, and without that gem, all of a sudden this ward is value, Lumi. Yeah, and Cloud9 also knows that there is no vision for sure on the side of DC, right? Because MV is walking through the jungle, his passive Shadow Dance is constantly on, so he is 100% sure that there's no vision and they could prepare for it. They weave up on the high ground, and are they thinking about Dubu? Are they thinking about Mason? Dubu is the target, I believe, DC. that you should go for. C9. He goes over the core here. <laughs> nice little snipe by Envy. Okay. But Abed could get caught out here. Doesn't have the dragon form yet. He gets jumped on initially. Do they? Are they able to focus him down? The BKB is committed, him. but it's right as he's doomed. He doesn't have the dragon form active. Huge loss in this fight. They can don't really have to worry about that dragon any longer. And now focusing down Mason. Can they finish him off? Silence. No, he gets the time lapse off for treating out quickly. Buyback is there. Dragon Knight potentially going to be able to rejoin the fight soon with the dragon form. Can C9 get this follow-up damage? They don't have the last any longer. The control's a bit lacking, but Pilot, I mean, pumped with damage from Mason will fall. And now they've also killed off MSS. Two going the other way. DC yep. sustained through the fight, and now Bulba on the chase doesn't have a four step to go with that blink. So won't be able to catch Owie. They check Roche, and it's not up, but it's only for just a couple more seconds if they want to recheck it again. I think they do stick around this pit. They do some dewarding. They'll shove in mid in the meanwhile. The dragon form's got a lot of time left. There's still a cheese up on Abed. Mm -hmm. So I think a couple things went wrong for Cloud9 in that team fight. First, they doomed the Dragon Knight. Yes, they did catch him before the Dragon Form was up. So he wasn't really that big of a, a threat. Fada's just playing very aggressive right now. Does have a Lincoln Sphere of his own. I don't know yeah. if we mentioned that, so. But but the thing Here's is. Here's the Roche. You, Here's the Roche. You doom the Dragon Knight, and sure, he doesn't have Dragon Form up. At the same time, you're not killing him, because he had BKB. And uh, if the pop. Weaver was doomed there, he is probably dead. I don't know if he would have been able to get it off, but. Yeah, he definitely scan got off time lapse. Scan comes through and will connect. It actually caught Bulba lurking outside the pit. Under cover of Invis, he waits. He has Epicenter. Envy has the pipe ready. Gem online. Weave gets deployed. Do DC get cold feet? They've got Veil as well as Weave on them. And Envy jumps in, lurching forward for Abed, but he gets up the cheese. He gets up the BKB. Now the silence coming through and they try to focus heroes down. Where's the damage for DC? It's coming from Mason. He gets it off. The age of Snatch by Fada in the midst of the chaos. But DC keeping their hitters alive. Envy's up to 29. Essence shifts charges, but will he stay alive? Grave by Pi. And from beyond the grave, he tries to get back. 
back to safety. 4F chasing forward. Envy goes down. Buyback from the Doom. They still commit for more. Fada lost that Aegis, but he rips his way back in. Chasing after Boba. Boba retreating for all he's worth. Has the Blake. Has no TP. The Radiance burning him down. Keeping those Tranquil Boots disabled. He is a goner. 4F should make it out. Well, that's a pretty good team fight. They did have to commit the Aoi buyback, but still, killing Dragonite. Did he act, did he have a cheese used? His HP? Dragonite used his cheese. Okay. Um, I didn't see who got the other one. Uh, and at, Fada had the Aegis and used the Aegis. Right. Fada snatched the Aegis. And snatched that, the Aegis. Yeah, so so that's it for Roche went to DC. A bit even there, but this could be problematic as they go in with the lasso. Quick interruption, though. Yule Scepter shuts it down. Shield. Clears it off, and now Mason needs to do oh all my the damage. God. Oh, shoot. <laughs> that the damage Weaver's output. hitting hard. Fada's in deep. Gotta respect the bug. Okay. Let's jump out, at least for now. But MSS oh with no borrow my. time. Look at Mason go. Ripping through MSS. They doom he gets doomed. He gets baited, but there's the four step back to safety. Four F's in too far. He's going to go down. Weaver stays alive. They have the buyback here, but no lasso available. Can they focus him down yes, during they the duration can. of this doom? No deny in sight. Out for 100. Mason has slipped. And now as Mason falls, C9 gets scared and back away. The Weaver buyback cooldown was not used. He actually likes the gold, but C9 may not realize it. And they don't commit for the racks. Yeah, they don't really have that much physical damage on the racks anyways. I guess Abaddon could have dealt a little bit, but his HP was very low, getting chunked down by Mason. So they back off, they shrine up. They know that they have the, well, the enemy shrines open if they want it, but Eternal Envy has other thoughts. He's thinking about maybe poking at Dubu a little bit. Are you feeling the Silver Edge right now from Abed compared to, I mean, basically that's an Assault Caress, for example. Uh, I'm not sure what else you could have gone for as a Dragon Knight that you would normally get, maybe like Heart or the Bloodthorn that he's getting now. I, I like the Silver Edge. It just looks bad because he hasn't gotten to use it, right? Like he, he's got the Silver Edge and every time he walks in a fight, he gets focused. So maybe that's just Cloud9 identifying the Silver Edge can be a threat to Mason, or MSS rather, and then they focus on him. But I, I still think it's the right item choice. AC would obviously help, but I think uh, at the same time, you know, I, I think the uh, Silver Edge has helped him farm a little bit more, has helped him to be more mobile in these team fights, so on and so forth. In all that chaos the last five, eight minutes, they did get back a gem. So four of has Owies now. Very important, as you were talking about, for the vision game. C9 still, I think, have the edge because of the Slark. Yep. And his ability to tell when the enemy has wards around, but it's at least something. I'm also very curious what Envy's going for next. Is he going to pick up more Disable in the form of Basher, or are we starting to feel like we need a little bit more damage? I think Abyssal Blade's okay. It's like a good mix of both. I, I definitely think it, like, it should not be like a tank item. Well, Abyssal Blade's kind like of Scotty, a tank example. item. Like Scotty, for example. I would not want to see a Scotty. For I think something like Orchid into Bloodthorn will be quite interesting. Especially, you know, just another thing to pressure the Weaver. Yeah. Um, do you see any Lotus Orb coming out on the Dire side? I don't. So I think it will be... It'll stick. Yeah, I don't, I don't see any Lotus Orbs. Speaking of Bloodthorn, looks like Abed is working on one. Yeah, I. it seems like Abed is the primary Doom target. I think it's mostly just because he's a lot easier to Doom. Yeah. You know, like you try to wait for the Weaver and then you die while waiting to Abed. Well, he Boba. might not die soon now. He's got the BKB finish. He's got a lot of armor to help tank uh, the Weaver. Although, tanking the Weaver seems a bit... <laughs> yeah, Weaver's got an MKB. Your yeah. Solar Crest is pretty much useless. Like you have decent plus armor, but you also have awful base armor. That is something C9 have really focused on this game, Lumi. MSS with the Blade Mount, the Medallion, the Vlads. Uh, of course, you have the Shiva's Guard up picked up on the Puck. They already have the Dazzle with the Casual Buckler and his own Medallion. It is truly a, an armor strat from C9. Even if it didn't look like it when the draft began. Yeah. Or when the draft ended, I should say. But even so, is it enough? You got the Bugs, you got the MKB, the Dessa. The Dragon Knight's right click coming into play. I mean, as we saw in that last engagement, Mason can't do it on his own. Like, they could. I don't want to say kite him, but they could, like, survive long enough where they could get a Doom onto him, and then that's all she wrote. So, Mason, despite all the damage that he's doing, he still need a good coordination of a global burrow strike um, from, from his DC partners. 
A grueling slugfest here on day at number four, the final day of the groups. C9 going deep against DC. DC, an outside shot at an upper bracket berth. C9, the pole position to not be eliminated at the bottom of the group. You know, they may find Pi. If I. Pi is. <laughs> what? Really? Yeah, he's. Really? He might. He's trying to TP out. He's got the. Oh my god. Yeah. This is, that never ends with Pi Light I Living. No. What a sick twist to this story. That's not how it's supposed to go. Who is this imposter? I just want to say that I think TI. It's a big loss to TI if Cloud9 gets eliminated. I'm not saying that as a Cloud9 fanboy. I just think that this team is just truly entertaining to watch. And it will just be fun for the main event to have some of this clown fiesta. Envy leaps in for a courier because <laughs> that's the stuff that Cloud9 does. And now he might die for this. Oh my god. Envy, I swear to god, if you freaking die right now, there's a lasso available. He's going to commit his ult. They're going to chase Retreat it. away. They do have the global and they're going to drop it right now. But the lasso oh. gets broken. MSS somehow got it off there. Baited. Calculated. Envy All goes back in. All part of the master plan for EE Sama. Doesn't get the kill yet. Mercy was had. The MSS was down. And now Abed in trouble. Abed's going to be finished up. No buyback on him. No one to Dubu. Calculated. Calculated. But Boba trying to answer back. Can he get the damage out? It's not enough with the epi. Yeah, okay. Great play by Envy. You see how he baited the team in? That was a next level decision to dive that courier to the rack. And then, you and know. And then turn around at the exact right moment. Let me. DC, not a very mobile team despite having the Weaver forcing them apart and then. The Wolves coming in from the back. Expert play for Cloud9, and I think that might get them the racks here. The Fire is trying to be laid out by uh, 4F. They join in, and now it's start to, uh, time to focus the Raxes. Envy, though, is taking heavy damage. Mason hits hard. They don't have a whole lot of lockdown for him until that coil cools down. It's coming soon. The Doom unavailable. MSS, now his turn to take the punishment, so they get the range. No DK. Unfortunately, without him, there's probably no chance. No Global, no Lasso either. Uh, or rather, no Global Lasso combo, I should say. Though the lasso is up, and C9 now march on to mid. Looking for their second lane. And Inan with a hope and a prayer. MSS, borrow time. is available. He's not down yet. Sticking around while Envy does the heavy lifting out in front. Not hitting all that hard. They get the one lane. They might have to settle for that. So, you know, at the first half of the game, we're talking about uh, Dragon Knight as a target that you don't really want to do because he's so tanky and he could do so much even being doomed, but. As the game progresses on, the fact that he has so many active items, you know, the uh, the break from the Silver Edge, the BKB, and even the Orca now, I think he becomes a very good Doom target. If you do do, uh, if you do Doom a bed, I think you do remove a lot of utility away from DC. Yeah, I mean, it's just so much. And like you said, so much easier. Yeah, so much easier to, yeah, so much easier to anyway. Yeah, I think he's gonna get doomed every fight. To be honest. Yeah. And then without without the stuns from Dragonite, I feel like they can contend with uh, Mason. They, they don't really have a great Doom counter. You know, there's no like Chen sent back. There's no Centaur Stampede. Like those, those are some of the more popular ones we used to see. But they're pretty, or even I guess Oracles potentially decent, but none of those heroes in the game. I wonder if Ali would think about getting a Hagenum Scepter. Just to apply break on Doom, although that seems a little bit of overkill. Like, they have no trouble killing the DK anyways. Yeah, I think it's just a luxury item. Yeah. Kana's inventory looks so funny. They have so many armor items. Pylite Dai also picks up a casual Forever. bucket. Oh. He wants to go. Well, Forev is certainly not a, a scared Dota player. He is a man. He's perhaps a bit too manly for his team's own good. I believe all of the Dota player in this international are men. So that is a correct statement. Thank you, Lumi. Bringing us the demographic stats that don't lie. Yep, stats don't lie. Oh, Nahaz couldn't be here, at least you could. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Cloud9, I think what they're trying to do strategically, strategically is wait for the next Aegis. Um, it's quite easy for them to isolate the area with the Slark Vision and then just take it. The one thing they do have to be somewhat afraid of is the Fat Rider Vision on the other side as well. Feeling confident, and Envy is going for that Scotty, by the way. So, Ultra Tank Slark, the name of the game. 
As DC looks to come back, they're going to break the Lincolns nice and early. Could be an opportunity to go in. They're going to start this with the Burrow, but Envy dark packs it off, and now Mason jumps in. Global, who do they commit for? They try to focus Doom. on the Slug. No, they want to get the Doom, but the Weaver's already been locked down. Can the Puck finish him off? Shiva's comes through. He's going to need to buy back. Has it too. 100 I'm seconds. in. No, buy back. Rejoin the fight almost immediately. Should be possible for him. And now Envy still forcing Abed away. Even though he's not doomed, Abed isn't hitting hard enough. The Graves, the saves from Cloud9 are simply too much. Nobody dies. The armor, the heals, the plus ones, they just keep on living. Focus somebody down already, DC. Say we must get a kill. They'll begin it with Owie. Can they get more? Envy's there, but he's got his ult. 11 Essence Shift Stack starting to ramp up. Oh. Chewing through Mason. No time lapse. He's got to back away. Now Boba sacrifices his life and fought us there with the punish. Dragon Knight buyback. All coming down to this. DC had a shot coming in today at the upper bracket, but with a loss here, it likely slips, slips away. And now two lanes down, a third soon to fall. Range racks are dropping. DC are falling. Cloud9 pushing forward. Just one melee left. The Megas are theirs. The game is nearly done. Abed being routed. Mason almost dying back. They try to drag one to the fountain. It's not going to happen. MSS dominating it. GG the call. Cloud9 turn what looked like potentially an 0-2 into a 2-0 and stay alive here at TI. Wow, what a way to do it. They started well in the laning stage and then standard Cloud9 mid game. Let's not talk about that. And then what a finish at the end. Showing off the utility. I, I love the way that they itemize their hero, just armor. They know that that's pretty much how DC is going to take over the game. And critical dooms uh, throughout the whole game. Aoi for me is definitely the MVP. Uh, for his laning dominance and also for the correct target uh, towards the mid and late game with the Dooms. I really think they should have given Abed more help, man. I think that was the big mistake this game. Yeah, uh, I think Sand King needed to They be just there. dual laned him, tri laned him for like eight minutes, and there's nothing Abed could do. So uh, I would have liked to see Bulba spend more time there, but you know, even so, DC had their shots and Cloud9 just outplayed them down the stretch. Scientists are not baffled for this one. <laughs> a little bit. They're a little bit. A little bit for the mid game. Yeah. But, but uh, uh, in a good way, anyway. Yeah. So Cloud9, they take it, guys. That's it for me and Lumi for now. We'll be back for the final series of the day. Not sure what stream. Newbie DC on stream two. But we'll have Cap and Draskal stepping in momentarily. Stick around.